good day to all our dear televiewers and subscribers of Deped R Teleturuan. I am Randolph N. Cruz, a junior high school teacher of Padre Gregorio Crisostomo Integrated School, your teacher presenter for today's episode. And for today, we will discuss biodiversity and evolution, specifically the subtopic which is causes of species extinction. What happens to a community when its species diversity is reduced? Does loss of the biodiversity affect an ecosystem's ability to sustain the species that remain or to perform certain functions that may contribute to the needs of the ecosystem? This episode will help you find answers to these questions. But specifically, we will target these following objectives. First, explain the importance of biological diversity. Second, Find out how changes in the environment can affect the species extinction. And lastly, distinguish environmental changes that may result in the loss of the species. First, let us dis define these important terms for us to easily understand the whole concept. First, biodiversity or biological diversity is the sum of all the different species of animals, plants, fungi, and microbial organisms living on Earth and the variety of habitats in which they live. While extinction is the end of existence of a group of organisms caused by their inability to adapt to the changing environmental conditions. Whereas, species is a basic concept in the classification of organisms. In simple term, a single species is a distinct kind of organism with a characteristic shape, size, behavior, and habitat that remain constant from year to year. And lastly, an ecosystem is a community of living organisms in conjunction with the non-living components of their environment. Interacting as a system, these biotic and abiotic components are regarded as linked together through nutrients, uh, nutrient cycles and energy flows. Now, what are the causes of species extinction? First, taking animals for profit. Second, hunting and trapping. Third, over-harvesting. Fourth, destruction of habitat. And lastly, pollution. Study figures 1 and 2. Picture yourself swimming and diving into Bataharip Marine Park where very high densities of marine species are found. What organisms are in figure 1? How many different kinds of organisms do you think you will see? Now imagine yourself standing in a coconut plantation. Which species do you think dominates this area? The Tupatahari uh, Marine Park has many populations. You can see hundreds of different species of organisms. Whereas, in a coconut plantation, only one species dominates. A population is a group of living things within a certain area that are all of the same species. Several different populations may be found in a community. A population of one kind may affect a population of another kind within the community. A jungle has a greater amount of biological diversity or biodiversity than a cornfield. Biodiversity refers to the variety of life in, the, uh, in that area. In a jungle community, some populations such as ants, fungi, and ferns can be very large in number. Other populations such as tigers and snakes have fewer members. Now, why do you think population sizes vary among organisms? Okay, let's talk about communities. Communities with many different species or high index of uh, diversity will be able to withstand environmental changes better than communities with only few species or which has a low index of diversity. In mathematical equation or in a mathematical uh, formula, Index of diversity is equal to the number of species times the number of runs divided by the number of trees. Now, vacant slats would have low ID or index of diversity since there are fewer species distribution. Grass lawn also would have low ID or index of biodiversity. The tree would also have low ID. Communities with uh, many different species have a high index of diversity. Now, let's talk about measuring population density. When we say population density, it is a measurement of population per unit area or unit volume. It is frequently applied to living organisms and particularly to humans. Now, in equation, 
we say that population density is equal to number of individuals divided by the size of area. Population can be of the same size but they may have different densities. Differences in population density may be attributed to many factors. The first factor would be when new members move in or out in an ecosystem. And the second is the birth rate and the death rate. Now, let's take several examples. Uh, suppose 60 ants live in a 4 square meter plot of grass. What would be the population density of ants? What would the population density be if 100 ants live in a 4 square meter uh, plot of grass? Population density is equal to number of individuals divided by the size of area. Now, our first solution would be population density is equal to 60 ants divided by 4 square meters. Now, your answer is 15 ants per square meters. And for our second solution, population density is equal to 100 ants divided by 4 square meters. Now, the answer is it is equal to 25 ants per square meters. Now, let's talk about limiting factors. Anything that limits the size of a population like certain environmental conditions are called limiting factors. Limiting factors keep population from first increasing in size and help balance an ecosystem. Now, examples of limiting factors are availability of food, water and living conditions, light temperature, and soil nutrients. Uh, let's deal with the carrying capacity. It is the maximum population size of an environment that can support. If the population size rises above the carrying capacity, organisms die because they cannot meet all their needs. Okay, now let's talk about endangered but not extinct. When species population becomes so low that only few remain, the species is considered endangered, will possibly extinct. In the Philippines, some terrestrial species like First, Tamarau in Mindoro. Second, Mouse Deer in Palawan. Third, Philippine Deer. Our fourth one is Monkey Eating Eagle. For aquatic species like First, Dugong or Manatee found in Negros, Batangas, and later are in danger of extinction. Threatened. There's a particular species that declines so fast that it becomes endangered and it is said to be threatened. An example of which is a study conducted by field biologists on population size and distribution of Philippine fauna. They reported that as of 1991, 89 species of birds, 44 species of mammals, and 8 species of reptiles are internationally threatened. This include all the Philippine eagle or monkey-eating eagle. Extinction is the disappearance of a species when the last of its members die. Now, these are the following causes. Causes to habitats due to increasing population. Natural vegetation in the area has been cleared. Concrete structures and other organisms gradually take over the area. Some areas were destroyed by natural disasters or by human activities. Local and global issues that contributed to species extinction. First is the deforestation. One of the country's environmental problems is the rapid rate at which trees are cut down. In the Philippines, the major causes of deforestation are the following. Canyon farming, illegal logging, conversion of agricultural lands to housing projects, forest fires, and typhoons. As a consequence of cutting down trees, the following effects are soil erosion, floods, decrease in wildlife resources that will eventually lead to extinction, Wildlife depletion, deforestation is one of the major causes of the disappearance of wildlife species. And there you have it. Please stay tuned for more discussion on our lesson about causes of species extinction. We'll be right back.